In this problem, we're given a function f, and we're being asked various questions. So the first question is to find the domain of the function. So the domain is the set of inputs. In this case, it's just the set of all x-coordinates. So it's the set. So we use the curly bracket notation. It's all the x's, so 1, 2, and 5. Those are the inputs. 1, comma 2, comma 5, and then we use the curly brackets to close the set. The range is the set of outputs. It's all the y coordinates in this case. So it would simply be 5, 9, and 21. So again, the correct notation is to use these curly brackets. So 5, 9, and 21. That would be the range of this function. To find the inverse function, all we have to do is swap the x and y coordinates. So the inverse function is the set containing the ordered pairs. So instead of 1, 5, it's 5, 1. Instead of 2, 9, it's 9, 2. And instead of 5, 21, it's 21, 5. And this would be the inverse function. So all it does is swap x and y coordinates. So because we swapped x and y coordinates, this is really cool, the domain of f inverse should be the range of f. Let's, let's check. So let's look here at f inverse and write down the domain. So it's the x values, so 5, 9, 21. 5, 9, 21. And this should be the range of f, and yep, it certainly is. So a function has inverse swap domain and range. This is a really good example. Even though it's simple, it shows you that that exactly happens. The range of the inverse function, it's the set containing, let's see, so it's the y values or the outputs, so 1, 2, and 5. So 1, 2, and 5. So that's the range of the inverse, and it should be the domain of f because a function and its inverse swap domain and range. I hope this video has been helpful.